In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn your Cube CD drive from this into this. common faults on the PowerMac G4 Cube is the eject mechanism in the CD drive. Almost every Cube is prone to this and every Cube owner has probably experienced this in their lifetime. You plop a disc into the Cube, the computer recognizes it, but then when it comes time to eject, it doesn't work. This is due to a common fault in the G4 Cube slot loading CD drive. Although the drive looks cool and certainly will function very well when working, unfortunately these drives do not hold up very well over time. In this video, I'll be showing you how to replace the belt in the drive, clean up the rubber rollers that push the disc out to hopefully get your drive into fully working order. Okay, so the first thing I wanna explain is why this happens, why the disc is prevented from ejecting. Well, there are two things that prevent the disc from ejecting from the drive, which is the black rubber belt that actually controls the eject mechanism and the large black roller that actually does the job of pushing the disc out. Now on this uh, eject mechanism, the motor is in the bottom half of the drive, which is right around here. And at the top half of the drive, this long belt connects the motor from here to here to this black rubber roller right about here. Now the thing about this belt, this belt here, it likes to get, it likes to lose its tendency and rigidity and sort of grip in general. And eventually this belt will get all flimsy and stuff and it won't do a very good job at ejecting the disc, even though this looks like it's moving. Now, the thing about this roller is the roller can also fault as well because, because the cube disc drive is facing up and dust can easily get into the drive and get this black roller all dusty and stuff, which actually kills the grip of the roller, requiring a cleanup. So what we're going to be doing in today's video is replacing this belt that connects the two motors together, the motor to the roller, and what we're also going to be doing is cleaning up the dusty roller. All right, so to attempt this repair, there are a few things that you're gonna need. Obviously, you're going to be needing a screwdriver. I have a screwdriver like this, but for the most of it, I'm going to be using something like this. This is a power electric screwdriver, which generally makes the job a lot easier. However, you should be careful when using one of these as it can really easily strip screws. What you're also going to be needing is an assortment of Phillips heads. Now, inside the, inside the cube, you're going to be finding a few assorted Phillips heads. And most important bit of all is a T10 Torx bit. And the important part about this is this sort of holds the frame together and you're going to have to be taking the frame apart inside the cube. So this is going to be important. Other than that, the, the screw bits are very simple and you can buy them at almost any hardware store. So you can go do that. If you already have the bits, that's excellent. And those are all the bits you're going to need. Now the last thing you'll need to complete this repair is an assortment of rubber belts. Now these belts are special belts, they're not stretchy like rubber bands, rather they're belts used to uh, move things around in the CD drive. Now something absolutely crucial about these belts is that they're 1.5 millimeters in thickness. Now I tried this repair earlier with thinner belts and they just did not have enough rigidity to actually push the disc out, so it's absolutely crucial that you have the right width, which is 1.5 millimeter. Another thing you might be asking is why an assortment of belts? Why not just get a specific single belt? Well, the thing about that is that there's no real way of determining the cube's belt length. And because it's so old, it's all kinked up and stuff, and it doesn't really, it's not really easy to measure. So it's best to just get an assortment of belts and try all of them out until you get a perfect fit, which is what I did for this repair. I'm going to link the belts that I use. This isn't a sponsored link or anything. These are just the belts that I use and had success with. And so, without further explanation, let's get into the repair. Let's get to taking apart the cube. Now the first thing we want to do is flip it over and press the handle on the bottom. This will release and then you'll be able to pull the guts right out of the cube. Then you can put the cube housing out of the way for now and save that for later as we won't be needing it anymore. Now we can pay attention to the rest of the cube's internals. Next thing you want to do is push the handle back into the cube and flip it right side up. 
The next thing we want to do is take off this top plate that holds everything together. Now there are four screws on the top of the cube and two more on each side. Now these are all T10 Torx bits that will need to be taken out. Now the four on the top are all identical, so you can start by taking those out. Those sort of hold the support beams into the cube, just to give it more rigidity. Now for the two screws on the side. Now there's another small one, and then you want to pay close attention to this one. The one in the middle holds the frame together even more, and this one is a lot longer than the other one, so it takes a bit more time to unscrew. You want to make sure to keep this one separate, as it should go back into the right hole when you're putting it back together. Same can be said on the other side of the cube. Now you should be able to lift the top panel off. There's this little cable here for the power button that you'll want to unplug. It unplugs just by pulling it out. Now what you want to do is remove this orange plate here. It should just unlatch from the case and it should lift right out, giving you your first look at the CD drive. The CD drive has four more Torx screws holding it in. Two on the left side, which I will undo here. Now, one thing to note about these screws is that they're actually threaded differently than the case slash structural screws, so you'll want to keep these separate. The other two screws for the CD driver over here. Now you'll note that the airport card is in the way of one of them, so there's a little latch that you just pull on and it should open like a book. Then you can have access to the next two screws and you can be able to take them out just like the other two. So now with the screws removed, you should be able to lift the drive right out of the computer. However, there are two cables that you want to remove, a data cable and a power cable. Now the power cable might be a bit stiff after years of being plugged in, but you can easily remove it. Now taking a closer look at the slot loading drive, we can see on the back that there's a little board that we have to remove. Now this is in charge of adapting the connectors to match the style of the cube. There are two screws on the back that need to be removed. I'm going to be using a regular screwdriver for this, as these screws are very easy to strip. Now the screws are quite small, and they're the only screws on the entire computer that are like this, so again, make sure to keep them separate, and remember to put them back in properly. Now the last thing to do is remove these two really small screws at the front of the drive. Now these require an extra fine tip screwdriver, so make sure to find a really small one and just unscrew them. Again, these are different to all the screws in the rest of the case, so make sure to keep them separate. Then to actually get the top case off, you'll have to jiggle it a bit and sort of work its way forward to get it off. Now I took a bit of time to do this since it's a bit difficult, but uh, eventually you can get it out. So now we have our first look at inside of the drive. Now I've plugged my in just to demonstrate how it works, however it's not, I don't recommend you do this yourself as it's a bit complicated and it's really easy to break something. As you can see the eject mechanism doesn't really work very well. Alright, so now that we're inside the drive, the first thing I want to do is clean the rubber roller. Now there are these two small springs on the left side and the right side holding this black top plate down. Now, we want to lift this black plate up, but we don't want to stretch out the screws because then they'll lose their elasticity forever, so we want to get those undone. Now what I'm going to do is use a pair of tweezers to very gently pull them up and to just release them like this. Now this works with both of these, they're sort of connected with a little latch. You do not want to stretch these that much at all, otherwise your drive will be ruined and I don't know where to find replacement springs. Once you're done with that, it should just lift right up. So now we can take our first look at this black rubber roller. Now if yours is like mine, it's a bit dusty. And even if yours isn't that dusty, I would still recommend cleaning it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with some rubbing alcohol. And this stuff is pretty strong and it'll leave some black stuff on your Q-tip, but that just means you're cleaning it well. Now you want to make sure to clean all sides of the rubber roller with a Q-tip, paper towel, or whatever cleans best for you. And you just want to make sure that there's no dust or any yucky stuff left on this. 
so that it works optimally when you put it back together. Now what we want to do is pull these little white things and latch it back in. Make sure it's latched in properly. Now we want to pay attention to the left side of the drive where the rubber belt is. Now I'm just going to use tweezers to take this out but you can use your hands if you decide to be a barbarian. Now the belt you can see has a lot of kinks in it and it's not as tight as it used to be from factory which is a bit of a problem because it doesn't mean it's moving the roller as well as it should be. Let's take a closer look at the belt. Now, as I said before, the belt has to be specifically 1.5 millimeters thick. It cannot be any thinner, otherwise it'll not work. So here I have my packet of replacement belts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out a few that closely resemble the original. Now, some of these are really small, some of these are really big, but I'm gonna try matching them as closely as possible and then picking a few. All right, so now I'm going to be putting the belt back in. Make sure to line it up properly with the wheel and the gear. Now, you also want to make sure you don't stretch it out too much. And you also want to make sure you choose a slightly smaller belt so that if you do stretch it out a bit, it'll still be quite tight. I think this one should work pretty well. All right, so now I've temporarily put the case back onto the Cube CD drive, and I've plugged it into the computer to test its functionality. I recommend doing this as it's going to be a pain in the ass if you put the belt in for nothing. So let's see if it ejects. And it works! I call this a success. And with that success, let's put it back together. Now putting the cube back together is a lot like taking it apart, so I'm not going to be talking much here, however I will make some important notes when putting it back together. Otherwise, enjoy the time lapse. Right now I'm making one last test before screwing everything together. And this is just to make sure the belt is absolutely tight and that it works at a 90 degree angle. And it works. Let's continue putting it back together. Now the next thing to note is this plate that we have to put back in. Now it's got this little orange indicator on the front that shows you what direction to put it in. You want that orange ball to be facing outwards from the top. And I struggled on this bit at first, but I eventually figured it out. You basically put it in like this and you have to make sure it's latched in perfectly. Once you know it's latched in perfectly, you can continue with fitting everything together and then putting all the screws back in. And finally, we can bring the case back and put the internals back into the case. So now, if we insert the CD, CD goes in, CD comes out. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial on how to fix the CD drive on your G4 Cube. I'm going to be releasing a second version of this video for iMac G3 slot loaders at some point, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good night. Goodbye.